And once again, a huge shout out to all of our supporters over at patreon.com forward slash 878 Survivor FM. All of our $5 supporters, our editors, thank you so much. Our production managers, our $10 supporters, Florida, Big Dog, Shane Murphy, Tank Dazza, Hawks Hammer, and Mark Godfrey. Our producer, Red Freedom, thank you so, so much, mate. 13 months, you're a bloody legend. Also, all of our YouTube members, Kenny Baker, another 13-month legend there, King of Lobar, Cinnamon, Muddy Tracklinks, Jake is Zero Cool, Raymond Normoyle, and Matt Z, and Marcin P2. All of you are legends who help the show go on each and every week. Thank you all for your support, even just by watching or listening each week to the podcast, and we hope you enjoy this week's show. And we are live in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... And welcome, everybody. Um, I'll start off first um, because I'm a little bit rusty. Uh, can everyone confirm that they can hear me? Anybody in chat, let me know you can hear me. Um, but I will assume that they can. And I will introduce the man of the hour, the one, the only, Wobo. How you doing, buddy? Hello, Boydie. How you doing? Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. Mate. I'm uh, doing very well today. Very hot. <laughs> I mm -hmm. um I, I did my usual way, but I managed to um offend um a lot of people um once again it seems on uh Twitter. Uh That's I, what you do. I put out a uh, yeah, it's what I do. It's it. I, I I'm not a streamer, I'm not a an interviewer or anything like that. I'm just a Twitter troll. Um yeah. <laughs> uh, but I put out a tweet basically calling on all Australians to go in and um um raid all UK streamers and um, uh, start taking the piss out of them if they complain about how hot it is. Um, and I've upset people. It, it, it was a joke. And I, I, unfortunately, I've upset people. You can't they, tell jokes not... on the internet anymore. No, you just can't. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't. Um, it, it made me laugh, mate. It, it, it was, I to say, I, I was trying, so I understand uh, where people are coming from. It can be a bit scary and all the rest of it, but... Yeah, as I said to one person um, in North Queensland, mate, um, when I lived up there in Townsville, we had a Category 5 cyclone bearing down on us, uh, and people were writing things on their doors and windows like, piss off Yassi, um, kiss my Yassi, and um, Yassi, <laughs> you're drunk, go home. Yeah, it's just, it's dark humour. You know, people could die, but... That's very dark, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it, it's kind of... I find of... it funny, though, but I, I can imagine why other people wouldn't, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just... Yeah, I, I yeah, it uh, it's me. I, I sometimes I don't think when I tweet, and I just yeah put my foot in my mouth. But this isn't about me, mate. This is about you, Wobo, mate. You are Boy, God tier mate. in the Daisy community, my man. You just I think without you, I don't know if I don't know if there's any anyone who could do what you are doing, mate. You're just the the level of detail you put in the amount of information you delve into. We half of us would be lost without you. I don't know. I think you did pretty well for two years without me. Um, no, mate, we I think missed you. Obviously, people people want me around, of course, because I can provide information in a digestible way. I guess I can pack hours and hours of research into say a five minute video and people can get all the information they need in five minutes and then all the questions they have for that subject are just gone and i try to answer every single one of those questions i think somebody else could do what i do if they replicated what i do but i don't know if they'd have the patience to do it because it's not it's incredibly time consuming and that, just, that's it mate you know yeah, <laughs> we, we you were gone for two years no one filled mm -hmm. that void. No one. Not a single person that I'm aware of stepped up and said, Wobo's not here. I'm going to start doing what Yobo, oh, Yobo, what uh, Wobo does. <laughs> Yobo. I, I was looking at, um, I, there, was a, Yobo. There, there was a first time chatter um, on one of the uh, pages, uh, and his name is Yo, I am Gucci. 
Um, and yeah, that's why I said Yobo. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a boomer. But yeah, no, no one come, no one's come close, mate. You know, there's plenty of people who've done um, uh, other, um, you know, informative videos. You know, you've got Archie, you've got Rav, um, who do all the guides and stuff like that. And you know, there, there's others that I'm missing, and I'm sorry, but you know, I'm I'm kind of a little bit um, um, fangboying at the moment. Um, but no one has come close to you, mate. There, there's just you are a one of a kind, my man. I, yeah, I kind of, I can't really say that I agree because it's like, um, it makes me sound really big headed, but yeah, I, I wish somebody else would at least give it an attempt. There are some people, like some smaller creators I've noticed have been trying to delve into more of the science sort of stuff, but it seems like they're just using information that's already out there and then just compiling it into like a free four minute video, which is fine. It's good to get uh, information out there, but we need, I think we need more people to gather that information. That's the difficult part. Not making the video, not doing the voiceover or the editing. I like all that stuff. Yep. What I don't particularly like because it takes so long is the research involved. You have to get all of the questions down and then you need to test every single one of those questions. And answering a question can open up five more questions that you need to answer. And you don't know how long you're going to be there. You can take hundreds of hours to try and solve uh, a certain subject. Like vehicles, yeah. for example, that's going to take me hundreds of hours to figure out all of the stuff. And I can condense all of that information in probably 20 minutes. How much of a challenge is modding um, for you? Because like, I, I remember, um, yeah, I, I like to send you tips and that um, because you know, who better to send it to to explore it? And I was trying to tell you about something I've done with vehicles um, and placing fireplaces under vehicles and you couldn't get it to replicate. Oh, yeah. And I, I actually never got back to you, but I realised that it was because I was playing on a server that had built anywhere. So the collision box was um. gone. So that must give you a lot of um, uh, grief when it comes to delving into the science of some of these things you look into. Um, that yeah. you know, people say something and then you try to replicate it and it turns out they're playing on a modded server and, yeah, build anywhere mm -hmm. and just all those sorts of things. That must really, you know, I, I imagine you probably wasted hours looking into stuff that isn't relevant. Yeah, a lot of people will say in the comments, no, I can do that. This video is wrong. I did this the other day and that and this and that. And then I asked them, did you play on a modded server? They say, yeah. And then I test it anyway just to make sure because I don't want to make, be wrong. And yeah, I could spend like half an hour testing something that somebody's incorrect about. Yeah. Or they just have a theory on it. And they believe this theory so strongly because they've believed it for two years. Yeah. And all of their friends are saying it and everything. And they're saying so... Uh, not aggressively, but so confidently that they know exactly why something is the way it is. And I have to go in and test it and confirm to them that it's not. So, yeah, a lot of my time is running around answering questions for other people, basically. That's what I do in the community, I believe. Do you, and, do you uh, have any you know, assistance? No, I do everything myself. You, you People didn't... are saying that I have some sort of team or something. I don't. It's just me. I do everything. I do all of my own animations for the videos. Other than when you maybe get uh, some people in to be, um, you know, like uh, uh, test dummies. No, I haven't done that. Uh, I've done that on stream yep. once, but I can spawn stuff in and do testing that way. And I have a second account for Daisy, uh, which I use on my laptop for testing stuff like shock damage that I can't test and sicknesses that I want to test quicker because these sort of things are really difficult to test without somebody else. But I can do that from my laptop. So I'm very lucky to have a laptop and a computer. Otherwise, I would certainly need somebody else. And I don't really want to rely on anybody else for the type of content. I know I should because it's always a good idea to um, uh, what's it? delegate delegate tasks. Yep. But at the same time, I don't really want to burden people with these tasks. And I don't want to have to rely on these people yeah. consistently for yep. uh, when I need them, you know. I, and look, I'd rather just try yeah, and do it myself. The the amount of content you put out, mate, um, 
you know, you, you, you're not obviously a channel where you can have, you know, um, five or ten um, funny incidents a day, but, you know, it, it, it seems like it's nearly every, at least I would say off the top of my head, every fortnight at the late, at the longest between when you put a video out, because you're always delving into something. It's just, you're churning out a great um, amount of content. Unfortunately, um, YouTube can be a very cruel taskmaster um, mm -hmm. with... Um, yeah the algorithm and yeah you know it's probably not that favorable but i think you're lucky in that you've really got no one else doing what you're doing i think that's right yeah if anybody else did join the space and tried to do what i was doing even if they're doing it at the same quality or higher quality than i do they would certainly struggle financially yeah without a doubt what, what about an editor moment. what about an editor have you ever considered getting an editor i wouldn't be able to afford it <laughs> <laughs> i would love to because editing could take me a whole day <laughs> editing a 10 minute video would take 8 to 12 hours um okay so... Wobo, we're, we're going to have a chat after this mate i'm going to talk to you about your patreon and we're we're going to talk about stretch goals stretch goals i don't know what that is <laughs> it, it's basically you you factor in a um a budget of what you think it would take so you reach out to mm. a, uh, an editor who you would be um, willing to trust. Um, you know, there, there's some great editors out there doing um, videos for some of the big names. Yeah, Un Cooper's one that springs to mind for me. Um, yeah, I know that guy. Uh, Ghoul Z, the guy who did the um, um, channel trailer for us. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of good people out there. And you find out what they would be wanting, um, and then, you know, you, you put it out to the community. Um, you know, and you tie it in with a stretch goal on your Patreon or on your YouTube members or something um, that, you know, I'm, I'm raising funds to um, be able to hire an editor. Uh, the, you know, like Sauerkraut just said in chat, mate, I'm sure the community would be willing to help. You know, you, you, you and um, there, there's basically three people I put as God tier in the Daisy community and not in any order, but it's you as Mondian, um, and happy bombs. Um, yeah, I'd agree. Yeah, not me. Obviously, I'm not going to say that I'm God tier. No, but, um, but as Mondi and yeah, and happy bombs certainly. That that was yeah. probably it, one of my rack, some rack as well. Oh, I, Mac, I'm, I'm know, not talking about mouth. the dev team. Yeah. Not talking about the dev team. Okay. But oh, actually, no, you kind of got me there because. Um, Sumrak's kind of one foot in in both sides of it, isn't exactly. he? Exactly, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, Namask is incredible. Yeah. Absolutely, I can understand why the developers don't want to add Namask as an official map because it's just there's so many different scripts in there that if they update the game for vanilla, then they would have to adjust it for Namask, and it would require a lot more extra work for them to do that. I think so. I think that's the reason they're not adding extra maps. Yeah, it's just difficult for them to do it on Livonia and Chernarus, and it makes stuff much longer. I think they they might wait um, until they have the game more fleshed out. I don't know. No, we're not we're not going to ask him that, Forrest. Um, um, we're here <laughs> just to talk about him. Um, what I would suggest you do is hit him up on Twitter or in his Discord. Um, he's got a whole section there for people to submit tips and suggestions of uh, stuff like that. But um, yeah. Um, we we, we want to focus more on actually Wobo, so we're gonna we're gonna get, we're gonna go we're gonna roll her back a bit, mate. We're gonna roll her back a bit. Mm -hmm. right, let's 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 delve into Wobo the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> How old are you, buddy? I am thirty five, I believe. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I try. I, try, I don't use my age so often that I sometimes forget, if, am I 36 or 35? <laughs> yeah, I'm 35. <laughs> I, bet I laugh because I do the same, mate. I sit across the table from a missus yeah. and go, how old am I now? Am I 49? Yeah, I'm 49. <laughs> is it, wait, is it 49 or 50? Uh, no, not 50 yet. No, 49, yeah. The years um, starting to blur into each other. That's a bad sign. <laughs> and you're married. Not yet. I well, will you're, be you're getting, in, you're oh, getting married. Yeah, I'm getting married. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, um, I'm available now. My DMs are still open. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be able right, to close yeah, that yeah. OnlyFans down very soon. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, plans for any kitties on the way, mate, or is that getting a bit ahead of yourself? Um, you know, I want to obviously have a family. Um, I think it's one of those things in life where it's a life goal. Yes. Even if you hate kids or whatever else, I think 
it's a good thing to do because what if you get to say 70 or 80 uh, if you get to that that age you're not going to have anybody to talk to you know all your friends are going to die <laughs> Your kids are going to be there to help you. That's that's who. So you need to start thinking. That's that's thinking very far ahead. But yeah, that's one of the main reasons why I'd have kids. Also, you get a lot of satisfaction from it. You know, raising kids. Although I I I do know that a lot of people complain about them. But yeah, it's definitely something that I'm looking to do. Look, yeah, yeah. That, that might reduce meant how many hours I have making videos. It, it probably yeah, the will. editors starting to sound good now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, mate, I, I am sure that there would be people who would be lining up to be able to uh, be right back subbing to Wobo's OnlyFans for some more. Oh, I love that <laughs> line, Jake. I love that line. Okay, oh, that's a question I've got for you um, that I was going to ask later, but Jake's, Jake's brought it up in chat. Um, who recorded the audio for Bonus Chaps? Oh, that was me a very, very long time ago. I don't really? remember which. Yeah, uh, a very long time ago. I was thinking about a bonus tip for my videos, like an additional tip. And I think at first it was serious. Like it, the bonus tip was actually serious. Um, yeah. And then I I sort of changed it in my next video. And I did something silly, like, bonus tip. <laughs> I, can't re I can't replicate it to save my life. I cannot replicate that noise. I don't know how I did it, but I just it's it's all it's all natural. It's all there. And if you I ever mean, lose I, that I off your computer, you'll be devastated. You'll be going back through your videos trying to rip out that little sound bite. It's one of the iconic sound bites of um um uh, of Daisy. Like I, I asked a while back on Twitter, you know, for people to get um what what are some iconic sound bites? You know, we've obviously got the infamous Eugene. Um we're talking uh we're not talking months, we're talking weeks. Um, oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah <laughs> bonus chaps is another one. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, okay. Um, so, what what do you do when you're not um, uh, making videos? Yeah, you know, obviously only if you're uh, willing to admit it. You can be as vague as you want about what you do in the real world. Mm -hmm. I touch grass, <laughs> <laughs> as the internet says nowadays. Yep, I would definitely like uh try to get out of my box i live in a box flat pretty much yep so when i'm working i can i can work for like two days just working in the box flat um and i wouldn't be outside at all the only time i'd go outside is if i need shopping um but when my fiance comes we will go for a walk we will you know just go into nature or do something or something to distract me it really does help if you do YouTube or whatever else constantly, it just burns you out really quickly. You need to constantly take rests. Um, I exercise as well, like I go running. Yep. I uh, have a bench press. You actually, it, like, I've said, I have seen um, the video of you um, during the fundraiser, which we'll talk more about later and that, um, mm -hmm. but you actually look like you'd be probably a, a pretty decent build for long distance running. Yeah, I was one of the best. Uh, runners in my school yep and i was like an athlete as well i guess like long were you, jump, were you a distance jump. runner or were you a sprinter i was definitely a distance run runner. Yeah. yeah they were much faster kids than, yep. than me in school yeah uh i would do i think it was a 1500 meters yep in england for my school long jump high jump wow uh, relay race if i was needed as sprinter i could do it but i wasn't the best yep so um yeah, quite athletic. I'm six foot three. Damn, I, I didn't pick say, that. <laughs> I'd say I'm quite well built. Like my shoulders are quite broad. Um, a little bit muscular Ooh. because I've been working out for the oh, past. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, keep talking four to years. me. Keep talking. A <laughs> little bit. Just like, I don't care about you know looking muscular. What are you, I care what, about what are you, what are you wearing right now? Huh? Not a t-shirt. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, because it's, it's so too hot. hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's way too hot. Uh, but yeah. it is really important to take yourself away from the internet and to basically touch graphs, like we say. Um, other than that, if I just want to chill out and relax, it's, it's going to be YouTube or some sort of film. Um, mostly it's YouTube, though, just watching other creators and getting inspiration. Not from people that do what I do, because there's very few people that do that. But from, um, I mean, there's quite a few creators that I look up to. Um, 
There's so many that I forget. <laughs> I mean, Filthy, Filthy Frank would be one of them for humor oh. because he's just so out there and creative. Oh, just see, now that's why you get my sort of humor. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> but my 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 young fella, he regrets introducing me to Filthy Frank. He <laughs> really regrets it because it really introduced me to a lot of um um the the millennial Zuma um comedy uh culture Zuma which is which is yeah. which is quite um in your face um uh he said like i'll say one word um uh, that you you'll get he said dad if you ever say bussy to me again i will kill you <laughs> <laughs> like making your son cringe <laughs> i do i do it, it, it's yeah. something that we um we, we we like to prank each other the best one he ever got me was with um um, there's a song on the internet. I'm not going to sing it, but it's called Ram Ranch. Uh, you may have heard of it. Um, 24 Naked Cowboys basically is how the song starts off. Um, and one day I picked up uh, my earbuds for my iPhone and I put them in my ear and I pressed play on it. And I, there was nothing happening. Um, they were my son's earbuds. And he got the notification that the earbuds were on and he figured, oh, dad picked up my earbuds. So he started playing and I've got this gay porn song playing in my ears <laughs> and I'm looking at my phone going, what the, <laughs> what is going on? What the hell is going on? And he come out and he was cacking himself laughing, absolutely <laughs> cacking himself laughing. That's the sort of humour that uh, he and I have. Yeah, he, he's, he's my best male mate in the whole world, my son. Uh, best mate in the world is my missus, but yeah. Um, now, lucky. the big question, mate, Wobo, mm -hmm. what Wobo. is the origin of the name? Uh, it comes from Kami Shovo yep. in DZ. And uh, yes, which is, which Kami translates Wobo. from Russian to English. If you don't know anything about Russian, you'd read it as Kambi Wobo. Yep. Um, that's where it comes from. I was interested in DZ for a long time. Armour 2. Daisy, I was watching people in helicopters. I was watching Frankie on PC, yep. and I just couldn't afford it. Like I had no money at all. Uh, it was a luxury to buy games, so I didn't um, have many games. I had free games like RuneScape and stuff like that, but that was about it. And my friend, in December, um, just before Christmas, he bought me Daisy Standalone. Uh, so 2013, he bought me Daisy Standalone, and there was four of us playing. Um, and we just loved Camby Wobo, the town, Camby Shovo. Yep. We used to hang around there, and, and I'd admit we were we were complete bandits. We would tie people up and we would kill them. And I, I have to you say, know, we, were we you were, were you the sort who gave douche rocks? Douche rock? Oh, that rock. The yes. One at the top. Yeah. <laughs> the ones yeah. Um, that oh, overlooked yeah. the road. The I that... came from a background. I, I came from a background of FPS games. So yep. it's like you see another player, you kill them. I didn't Daisy friendly and all the rest of it, like meeting somebody and going on adventures together. That was all new to me. So my first instinct, our first instinct as a group, was to just kill people. Yeah, you know, you see a fresh spawn, kill it. Yep. <laughs> and we'd run around Kami Wobo and and look, it, 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 and it was a mod for a PvP game. So that's why a lot of people came into it with that mentality. Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, we were just camp and kill and i found myself like even a month two months after playing the game and i was making some videos for it because i, I liked creating videos before and i was just doing it as a hobby um and i just log in on my own and i'd camp the town on my own <laughs> because i really enjoyed the adventure then i started to travel westward yep. and my friends got bored of the game and i was still playing it and i started to make more videos about it and it just developed from there i did a social experiment I just wanted to see how friendly or not friendly people were. They they uh, were all the wanted... rage back in the early days, weren't they? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were. Yeah, um, and I'd just talk to people and see if they're friendly or not. And I I really enjoyed it, just meeting loads of people in the game and seeing how they react to certain situations. And and that's where the experimentation side of stuff came in because when I was wandering around the map, um, I would be like. Oh, I wonder which weapon is best, the Mosin or the M4? Which which one does more damage? Like, how fast do the bullets travel? Is there yep, what you know, and stuff like that. And then I'd find myself like just sitting there, testing stuff on my own, 
very on my own, <laughs> just testing stuff and like gaining knowledge. There's loads of people in the Daisy community that do this. Um, loads of people and they come to me with loads of numbers and stuff like that they come to me on discord so thank you for all those people that do that yep um and i'm just one of those people that play the game and daisy is a sandbox game so you can play it however you want i play the game as like an investigator i like to run around and discover stuff um that's the best way for me to play the game second best way is to pvp um yeah i like the survival element so i was built for this i think yeah <laughs> now it was quite funny you um you did a stream the other day um uh for the first time in a long long mm -hmm. time and you you, t you said before how you started off with um uh, being a fps uh shooter player um uh, but you were actually making fun of yourself for just how bad you were playing <laughs> yeah. um but the whole time because i was watching for a bit of the stream the whole for the mm -hmm. whole time it was Kind of, you, you kind of reminded me of the the modder mentality that um, yeah, most modders barely play the game, um, mm -hmm. and you know when they actually do, they're not that good at it in most cases because they you know they know how to mod everything in, but they just you know they, they haven't got the hours up like a running man or a tow brick and um, yeah. you know a smoke, um, so they really struggle when it comes to playing the game. Does that impact you with your research at all? I wouldn't say so. I, if I was talking about PvP stuff, I'm I'm not. I, I you know if I was saying if in this situation you should do that and in that situation you should go to the high ground or whatever else, I'm not doing that sort of information. I'm doing strictly statistical stuff. And while it does impact the absolute um, bottom line of my information, like if if somebody knew that I wasn't a professional at this game, not professional, but really good at playing the game people assume that i'm really good at the game that's the problem i think they assume that i'm some professional at the game that i know everything that i'm pvp situations i, I always do the right thing and all the rest of it um my information is very statistical and i do not have a lot of background when it comes to recent patches yep. so playing the game i have thousands of hours I know exactly how Daisy works. I know the feelings. I know I've gone through all the motions that everybody else in this community has gone through, the ones that have played for a long time. So I believe I still am in a position where I can still say this is the best in this situation and that's the best in that one. But as long as I don't step into the realm of PvP or um, saying that one is better than the other because I find it more often... I don't have a lot of experience in that front, I think, and that is definitely something that I need to look into. Other than that, I don't think it's a massive deal, um, but if people learned it, yeah, they might be like, oh, wow, he doesn't play that game that much. But the reason I haven't is because of my shoulder injury. Yep. If I'm laying on the bed and I'm making videos, it's much slower, first of all, because it's difficult to work with a keyboard and mouse while you're laying down to rest the shoulder. Um, but also I don't have a microphone, so I can't talk to anybody in the game, and I don't really have a lot of time to play the game. The, the way that I used to play the game while creating YouTube videos is that I would stream. So I'd stream, play the game, and uh, get used to the new mechanics of a patch, the ins and outs, the stuff that you don't know from the game files, or the stuff that's on the surface, you know, the stuff that only a player of the game would understand. Yep. Um, and I used, to, I used to do it that way, and recently, because of the shoulder injury, I haven't been able, been able to. So my goal is to stream on a regular basis, and I do plan to stream before the end of the month, um, just so I can get into the game again. And I'll be streaming every, say, one week to two weeks, um, just to basically touch the grass and daisy. <laughs> because it's very much needed. As somebody that's looked up to as much as I am in the daisy community, I believe it's very much my, my responsibility to make sure that I am one of the players running around getting themselves killed due to bugs that I can't see if I don't actually play the game. So to get the feel of the community, it's necessary for me to do that. But I wouldn't say for my videos, it's necessary. My weapon statistics videos, you know, yep, it's statistics. It's, it's not me saying this one is better because I've killed more people with it. I'm saying it's better because it, it can kill at longer ranges and stuff like that. But I do a lot of testing against test dummies in the game. I know it's not the same, but I have a great feel for how to use weapons. Mm -hmm. It's just using the inventory 
um, multiplied with key binds and making stuff quick. And there's a lot of things that um, I need to learn, definitely. I, w I would say, though, um, I wouldn't want to come up against you in a um, like an urban environment um, because you would know where and how to wall bang someone better than anyone else in the game. I, I, I would have to, I, I'd bet money on it. Yeah, I probably am. I don't want to, you know, put myself on a pedestal here, but I shot through every single building surface with nearly every gun in the game. And yeah, I don't think anybody else has done that. If they have, then they're probably on the same level. <laughs> but nobody else has done that. They've just watched the video of me doing it. And yeah. That can't really give you all of the information because otherwise that video would be hours long. You know, it would just take forever. Yep. But yeah, I would say when it comes to wall banging, yeah, I'd probably be one of the better people in Daisy for that, for sure. Mm. But they have changed pen penetration recently, so. Um, Ooh, that's a that's a spicy video for you. Um, a word like penetration word, gives you um, lots of um, those dirty puns that you put into your videos. Oh yeah, yeah. For which sure. which <laughs> I, I, there was a comment before uh, someone said about it. You know, your dirty humor. It adds to them, mate. Yeah, they could be so stale and boring, uh, but you add your own little, um, uh, Actually, yeah, yeah it's it, 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 it's it's really appreciated. Edutainment. Edutainment. I like that. I yeah. like that word, edutainment, yeah. It wasn't me that said, uh, created that word, but I, I do agree, like, you can't keep it stale. It's YouTube at the end of the day, you know. People choose to watch your videos, usually in their free time. They want to have fun in their free time. Um, you know, they've probably got stressful lives. They don't want to work and all the rest of it like nobody else. Um, like everybody else, I mean. So when I upload the video and people see that notification, I want them to be like, oh, yeah, I watched this video. Because in the past, I've had one. I'd have, I had fun watching that type of video. So I try to keep it fun. But a lot of the time, if the, in if the information is interesting enough, then it just carries itself and I don't need to put any humor in there. And I won't put any jokes in, forced jokes. So if it doesn't come naturally to me, yep. then I won't force a joke in there because it just it doesn't come across naturally. And people can tell that. People are very intelligent when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah. Um, that you're you're faking jokes. I'm I'm terrible at lying and faking jokes, so I just don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, what would what would but you, be... with all of your knowledge of the game, in there, what what's something that you would love to see added to it? Added to Daisy. There's probably a million things, but if I was being incredibly selfish, it would be bicycles. Just um, imagine spawning in like Solnitsny and there's a bike propped up yep. against the fence and you could just jump onto it and you travel, say, two times the speed. I don't care if the animations suck. I don't care if I don't move my legs around in a circle with the yep. thingy. If I'm moving at two times the speed and I'm on this bike, I'll be happy, very happy. I don't care if it looks like crap. You know, if it doesn't need animations, if you get off of it, then it can just stay still, you know, like stood up. I think the reason they haven't added them is because it would be janky, very, very janky. But there's a lot of janky stuff in Daisy already, so why not just add it? I think it would be incredibly fun to, uh, you know, have a few bicycle spawns around the map and people can ride bicycles. <laughs> I think I, that would bring a lot of people back to Daisy, actually. I do think I remember something about um, um, going off-road. Uh, th there would be quite a, um, a job for them to uh, rework the textures or something like that because the, the whole vehicle, instead of being a four-wheel chassis, it's a two-wheel mm -hmm. chassis and it'll interact differently. And I remember that was something big of why they haven't put motorbikes and yeah we, we even remember from back in the day way by the the models they released of the old motorbikes that they were looking at putting in mm -hmm. i remember that yeah mm -hmm. very excited yeah <laughs> but yeah they didn't they didn't put them in did they just i think it's on trello May was it trello i don't remember something like that yeah um what's your biggest gripe with daisy what 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 grinds your gears the most well i don't really play all the game the, the game all that much so it would probably be something to do with um how difficult it is to mod i would say the way that you work the game files it 
it's not very well put together and and you have the game files as well and it's all over the place it's like you find weird things in different places you have you really have to know your way around the game files in order to understand where to look for stuff because there's so many different files and so many different folders and it's to criticize it's like um not very well organized and it must be a nightmare for mod modders if they have if they have a problem with their mod and they're not sure where to look because of it's conflicting or whatever else then it must be an absolute nightmare it's difficult to look through them the game files so yeah. i think that's something that i would like but it's you know i don't think it's going to happen because the devs already know how the game files work and where to find stuff and where to put stuff it's just I wish it was a bit more organized, like it made a, a, a lot more logical sense. Like you've got the add-ons folder, you've got the, the DTA folder, you've got scripts folders, and you need to sign add-ons and all of this stuff. It, it seems like there's too much going on. Make it easy for people to mod your game, because I think Daisy is quite difficult to mod. The people experienced, maybe not, but it seems like when they release a patch, Sometimes it breaks the most fundamental mods that we need, like the CF mod. Yep. CF and tools. Admin and... tools yep. mods. They get broken because of these updates. That shouldn't happen. You, you shouldn't rely on your community to update their mods every single patch. You should create frameworks that allow modders to um, use older versions of the you know, mods. It's, it's something we talked Otherwise, about on the podcast um, mm. a while back about how volatile it is and. When they, you know, I think they've um, taken steps to make it better, um, to give uh, modders more time during the experimental phases and not just dropping um, big changes that they just can't prepare for. Because, yeah, that's always um, very difficult on them uh, for the modders. You've got to feel for those poor buggers at times. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they make, modders, it, they make modders, it so hard for them to earn, earn a coin as well. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, modders, like like I was saying, is um, they're the the unspoken heroes of the Daisy community for yeah. sure. They they deserve way more love. They ha do. Hashtag I feel adopt like a modder. I don't deserve as much as they do. Hashtag um, adopt a modder like is um what I try to yeah, um, spread. Uh, yeah, I mean the one is an incredible modder, and he's helped me a lot, a lot. Like, well, I, I actually wanted to talk about um him because. From what I can, from what I've seen, as a um, you know, just someone looking at uh, uh, what you've done, he's probably made a mod that's had the most influence on your content that I've seen from anyone, and that's that one that um, you, we see in a lot of your videos where it shows mm -hmm. the actual bullet trajectory. The projectile uh, mod, yeah, it's called. One sec, uh, just in case anybody else wants to. Get a hold of it. I forgot what it's uh projectile debug on Steam. You can download it. Yep. Um so this mod is a bullet mod that tracks the bullets as they float through the air. It doesn't work for the newer ammo types, so the flare round the flare rounds um and the forty mil forty millimeter rounds for the grenade launcher. Do I so fix your fucking mod, mate? <laughs> lazy fucking modders <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh so this this mod is absolutely incredible um it has helped me so much in understanding how bullets work in daisy um especially especially with the when you were, especially when you were doing the projectile uh sorry the the wall banging ones and showing the you know deflections of bullets and things like that that was amazing for mm -hmm. me that was brilliant Absolutely, yeah. It's it's an incredible mod. It's like he came to me. I came back from uh looking after my mum, uh the break I had, and he came to me and said, Hey, I'm working on this mod. What do you think about it? And uh he showed me loads of images and he was working on it and I was just amazed, like set back, like, wow, like who is this guy? <laughs> And he was just blasting these videos at me, like, this is how it works. This is what it would do. Yep. What do you think about it? And I was like... I'm and he's got a good sense you know. of humor, too, when you're messaging me, doesn't yeah. he? <laughs> For sure. And he um, he was just, I think, confirming that 
I was actually going to find this mod useful and I was like absolutely blown away by it when he was showing me that you could see the bullets go through a shed and then curve slightly as it and as it um leaves the other side and I was absolutely like I didn't know that was possible in Daisy that it would change the angle the of the bullet as it's yep. going through yeah it's absolutely incredible and I was just for the first few hours that I had the mod I was just messing around just like shooting this shooting that trying different things and we found different um weapons that couldn't penetrate and ones that did and ones that deflect better and surfaces that change there's so much to cover um when it comes to penetration i believe i covered most of it so um the bullet sort of side of stuff i think we we have a good idea of and it's just absolutely incredible and the fact that it's available for anybody to download is also incredible so you know the one is an absolute legend in the daisy community he, he should get a lot more love than he does definitely. well he's you know I, I said before you know the three people um there's actually four vigilante gamers another one um i can't believe i forgot oh, his yeah, name yeah. um but we, like you said before mate these the, some of these modders um you know jacob mango um to one mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um and clement dab um dump gra um Ice blade. Um, I, there, there's, I've got. I'm, I'm having a senior moment. Um, <laughs> I'm being trolled in chat. Um, Dancer Jesus is trolling me. Yeah, um, Dancer Jesus, I see. <laughs> but yeah, there, there's so many people. You know, the expansion crew, um, Lieutenant Masters, and just Helkiana. Um, yeah, it, the more you think about it, it's there's just there's so many of them. Um, mm-hmm. And they deserve so much more love. Um, yeah, I, I'd love, I, I'd love to see some of the big streamers get them on. Um, and you know, instead of doing a, a collab with another big streamer or even you know maybe a smaller streamer, get on mm-hmm. some of these people and just talk to them while they're playing um, about what they do. You know, let people know about them. You know, spread the love. Show the yeah. You know, it, it's it's one of the reasons why I started the podcast was so we could start uh, shining the light more on the amount of the amazing community. people in mm-hmm. this community, and it's not just the big mm-hmm. names who make it up. Yeah, it's exactly. you know someone said before um, that uh, one of the other um, <clears throat> much maligned people who don't get to play much is the is the uh, community hosters, um, the people who run the servers because they spend most of their time. You know, trying to fix bugs and um, sort out tickets that people lodge when they get butt hurt because their base got raided and stuff like that. They barely get mm-hmm. time to play. And yeah, there's there's so many unsung heroes in this community. There absolutely is. Um, what I was planning to do with my streaming is create like a fundraiser for a certain modder on a certain day. Yep. So um, the one would certainly be one that I would be looking to do fundraisers for. The um, one is the guy behind the Vanilla mod. Plus Plus servers, folks. Um, probably one of the most popular deathmatch servers. Um, yeah. yeah. So he, he's he's another god tier um, modder. Yeah, we've got loads of god tier creators in the community. Uh, the Daisy community is absolutely incredible. The variety of people that we have and the the community. Yeah, you're going to have some toxic people here and there in any community. You do you have like ten percent that are just degens? <laughs> if I could use that word, you can. Um, you can. I think any community has these people, and we just need to well, remember that. Well, there was one of them in chat, Dancer Jesus. <laughs> oh yeah, degen of Jesus. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Degen Jesus. I like that. That's good. That's good. <laughs> uh, uh, so. This community is absolutely fantastic. What they've done for my family as well is just, you know, well, yeah, well, 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 let's delve into that, mate. So, mm-hmm. you know, for, th- for those who weren't around um, um, a few years back, um, but the the community was kind of devastated. Um, you know, I know that's a big word, but um, Wobo released a video basically saying that he's going to be um, um, quitting um, <laughs> doing his content. Um, and that was due to major health issues with your mother. Um, mm-hmm. And a bunch of people um, uh, got together, but the one who has to be shouted at the most is um, the running man. 
um, who, sure. um, you know, you said you were going to do this charity stream, and the Running Man actually started streaming uh, a number of hours before um, I was a mod for him back then. Um, and this is a story that the Running Man's talked about, but um, kind of di diverting a bit here, but the Running Man started the fundraiser, and he raised a shit ton of money. I think it was something like tw about 20000 US dollars, a ballpark figure. Someone in chat will probably know. Um, but then he got fucking hit hard. Um, PayPal were going to charge him fees. And the fees mm -hmm. for that sort of uh, money was hundreds of dollars. And I remember Spaggy and I were DMing each other at the time, going, holy shit, this is going bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but the running man had set it up so that <clears throat> it, it, but basically whenever you do a fundraiser like that, um, you generally say it's only donations using this link. Um, and bits were around back then. So I know I donated um, a few hundred dollars. I know Spaggy donated a few hundred dollars in bits to cover what we knew was coming with the PayPal thing, but thankfully that all got sorted. Um, but it, it was probably one of the most shining moments in the Daisy community was when everyone got together um, to help you out, mate. And it must have blown your mind. I still can't even, like, express it in words, you know, like, that, that sort of feeling. The I, I, There's some things you can't say out loud it's like this they're, so, they're just so beautiful like yeah to witness that you just can't put it into words that correctly define the situation you i think it's something that you had to be there and you had to feel it was absolutely incredible i don't i haven't ever felt anything like that and i still remember sure. um because I, I was in the Running Man stream, obviously, and I, um, I think I stayed up late that night because it was such a big, you know, how fucking lame am I, mate? Uh, I'm staying up for watch fucking online people that I've never met in person. But, yeah, that, that's our lives. We love it. Um, but then we switched <laughs> over. Yourself, Once you started streaming, we raided you. Um, and then the donations, it was just... <clears throat> You could barely even actually talk because you were trying to acknowledge every donation um, that mm -hmm. was coming through. And and how much all up roughly got raised? I know I know you said it publicly, so it's not like we're um, delving, but it was over thirty thousand US dollars, wasn't it, or something like that? It was about thirty four thousand in that ballpark. Um, and then a year later, we did the charity stream where I did a skydive and I raised a thousand pounds. Yep. So again, that's like fourteen hundred dollars, thirteen hundred dollars. So let's say just thirty five thousand dollars in total, which is absolutely incredible. The I, I, I know a lot of people charity. didn't unsub to you on Twitch either, did they? Oh yeah, for sure. A lot of people uh, stayed subbed on Twitch. They were supporting me on Patreon, um, although that did quickly die off. But people stayed on Patreon for a long time, like two years. Yep. So there was a lot of support, continued support. I. I, I don't, I, you know, I was hoping to raise maybe like $1,500 in total. And that was really reaching, you know, like if I could reach that value, then I wouldn't have to sell my computer. So, yeah, <laughs> absolutely blown away. But I think like about half an hour after I released the video, somebody already donated on PayPal um, $1,000. Wow. Yeah. And I was just absolutely blown away by and that. You, I, and I you still went to and worked at KFC, mate. Yeah, I worked at KFC because I don't want to be sat there doing nothing. Yeah. You know? um, looking after my mum wasn't really a full-time job because of what happened afterwards. The doctors were saying that she's, you know, going to be in a pretty horrible state. She probably won't be able to use her arms and all the rest of it because they were operating on her neck. They basically removed the bottom of her mouth. So the jaw, from the back of the jaw, from uh, from the neck upwards, halfway up the neck upwards towards the jaw, and the entire bottom of the jaw, the skin there was completely removed. She had to have a new tongue flap, uh, well, a tongue flap um, installed just so her tongue would work properly. And all of the skin that was put there was from her left arm. And also the nerves from her left arm were put there too. And I think the doctors, because it was quite a uh, rare situation that you'd have cancer in your neck um 
they didn't know what to expect. And I think they kind of overblew it a bit with maybe telling us yep. that she's going to be disabled, she'll need a carer. And Look, I, like I, that. I, know, I, we I think that's smart, though. Well. Yeah, yeah, if, you, if you expect the worst, if that happens, you were expecting it, anything away from that is good. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, she certainly wasn't perfect when she came out. She couldn't use her arms at all. She couldn't raise her arms up. She was constantly getting infections in her arm and in her neck. Uh, I remember on Christmas Eve, actually. Uh, no, Christmas Day it was. We just ate Christmas dinner, and I had to grind up my mum's Christmas dinner because she couldn't eat solid food yet, and yep. she wouldn't be able to for months. Um, she had her dinner, and then uh, the, the problem in her neck was becoming worse, like it's becoming more infected and becoming very painful. And then, uh, I hope no one's eating right now, but there was an explosion of uh, blood, and we were all very scared. Um, and we had to rush to A&E on Christmas Day. Wow. Um, and there was a lot of drunk people there. <laughs> I think the people just got so drunk and they, they're in A&E. There was a lot of people there on Christmas Day. Yeah, um, it, luckily, it, it was all okay. Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. It was all okay. She had some antibiotics um, and she was all right. But the worst part, I think, of the whole experience for her was the uh, nervous system changed because of how they move stuff around and disconnected and connected nerves again in her neck. You know, this is like one of the most sensitive areas yeah. of the body. Um, she couldn't walk as well as she used to. Like, even though her legs weren't affected, uh, weren't um, operated on at all, because of what's been happening in her neck, her legs weren't working as she remembered them. So she would sometimes fall over. And yep. I remember for the first few months, she was falling over constantly. She dislocated her, her leg. Uh, and she had to wear a strap that had uh, was like tying her leg together. But the problem was that this, this strap was very slippery underneath. And then she kept falling over because it was too slippery. Um, so she had to have like rails installed everywhere. And I mean, without the money, that wouldn't have been possible. Um, and it's it's helped an incredible amount. Absolutely. Like, I think the worst part for me in particular was that I just didn't have any money. Uh, my business at the time wasn't doing very well. Um, I didn't have any money. I was selling all the things that I collected. Me and my girlfriend at the time were selling everything we had because we didn't have enough money. That's kind of my fault for maybe holding on to my business for too long, a web design business. Yep. Um, but at the end of it, when I was like absolutely pretty much bankrupt, had nothing but my computer, um, that's when I got the phone call and it was absolutely heartbreaking. I just, I burst into tears as soon as she told me. I got a question for you. So you, you, you're in your 30s, so, um, you know, you're old enough to remember when, um, you know, before the internet became big and all the rest of it and the online gaming and Twitch and all the rest of it. What did your mum think of all of these geeks and nerds and basement dwelling incels um, that are gamers <laughs> uh -huh. raising all this money for someone that 99.999% recurring of them have never even met in person? What does she think of that? I honestly don't know. I don't think she could process it. Like, I couldn't process it. I didn't know what to think about it. I what do you think about it what would you yeah let me let me pass it to you what would you think of that situation like there's no words to it's me of course people are going to throw money at me yeah, <laughs> no i would never i i i would be stunned mate you know look i i did a fundraiser for one of my friends uh moonshine um who oh, yeah. i play with um a lot and i was stunned um even at the support from people who I've never met, who've never met Moonshine. You know, Moonshine is this um, redneck guy uh, from West Virginia who um, is stuck in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. And all these mm -hmm. people raised money so we could buy him a new computer. The guy was playing DayZ on like a 10-year-old laptop. Um, and, yeah, he, he told me his story. Um, and I was just gobsmacked. And I thought, well, what's, what's the, you know... Uh, <laughs> Scale speed of bloody hell is hot in here. Don't don't forget me in more shit, mate. I'm already in enough shit with everyone on Twitter again. 
Um, but yeah, it's 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 amazing what people will do, and we see, we see it time and time again. Um, you know, we just had Ariana um, mm. talking about selling her computer, um, and people raised money. Um, you know, there, there's just been countless examples. Um, you know, all these streamers who do their charity streams of that as well. But for me, it's always um, better when um, you know, even on a lesser extent, the one that um, uh, Helkiana started uh, fundraising to get some rack a new PC. Um, oh wow! Yeah, did you know about that one? I think I heard something about some rack not having that good of a PC. Yeah, and we yeah. all just thought that was an absolute abomination. And yeah, you know, he does uh, work in uh, the Czech Republic, and I'm I'm making an assumption here, but I'm guessing that he's probably okay paid, um, but mm -hmm. you know things like computers. Oh, the cost um, of living, yeah, yeah, the, the, a, a high end um, computer probably mm -hmm. um, costs a hell of a lot. Um, yeah, same price as for an English person as it is for a Czech. So, yeah, you know, so <laughs> yeah, we thought, well, there's plenty of um, us who've got, you know, if, if, even if only a few people could spare, you know, a few quid in that. And yeah, we were mm -hmm. able to. Um, Helkiana was the uh, person who did it, and we were able to buy a Sumrak, a high-end gaming PC. Um, he oh, built yeah. just for those who don't know, Sumrak built Namolsk on a laptop. <laughs> That's pretty incredible. Yeah. Namask is my favorite map. Even though Chernoris is close to my heart, I think Namask has the uh the heart of Daisy. Like you have a lot of uh, action. It's yep. straight in there, you know, the coldness, the survival, there's a backstory behind it, there's lore, there's different elements that you don't have in the different maps. Have like you made it to Lantia yet? Darkness. Have I do I've done what? Gone to Lantia, I think it's called. No, the, I, the only other map I've tried is Namask. That's it. No other play, no other maps. But I would be doing that when I get back to streaming. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I think yeah. Um, get in contact with someone uh, who runs a, one of the community servers and ma maybe make an event of it. You know, do it with your Patreons and your YouTube members and that, um, mm -hmm. and do a run to try to get to Lantia. Um, I hope I'm saying it's right. You know, I do a Daisy podcast. I should know what it's called. I, I haven't been there yet. Well, I haven't made it there. I love uh, going under Molsk, but I'm too scared to um, go into um, all the uh, high-end places there because I suck at PvP, but yeah. But no, mate, it, it was a truly uh, memorable... Um, yeah, it, it has to be top three, top two, probably the number one event, um, barring Survivor Games, um, that mm -hmm. I can think of um, with DayZ. Um, was the Wobo fundraiser, mate? And I, yeah, you know, don't do on behalf of the majority of people. I'm certain there'll be some wankers out there. Um, there always is. Um, and goodbye, Scar Speeder. Good to see you in here, mate. Um, but we're just glad you're back, mate. You know, we 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 were devastated to lose you. Um, mm -hmm. but we're just glad you're back, and you seem like you're in a pretty fucking good place as well. And that makes us all happy, mate. At the end of the day, yeah, we just very, want people to be yeah. happy. Yeah, the whole the whole experience with um, going through basically losing my web design business because I wasn't earning enough money um, to my mum announcing that she has cancer as that's happening to me. Um, not that it's all about me, you know, but stuff like that, it makes you stronger. Yeah. And I think you change as a person. And beyond that point, I sort of looked at life a bit differently you know like how short it is how lucky we are to be here how what you have can be taken away from you at any second and it kind of knocks me back and made me realize that i'm not some you know a, a person that should take stuff for granted and ever since then i think i haven't and i look after myself and i do the best job i possibly can with the resources i have and i think i've Showing that to many people. People believe that I work in a team on Wobo. I, I do everything myself. And um, I think that's testament to how I've changed um, from my old uh, self. Before I used to play the game a lot and I used to play a lot of other games and make Daisy videos. But now it's like I feel like I have a purpose to provide information for the Daisy community and 
This website that I'm creating is absolutely the gift that I want to give back. This is one of the main reasons I came back to Daisy is to give people um, this website. And at the moment I am uh, getting it financed so I can financially progress with updating the website and keeping it online and um, all the rest of it. And this is, I think, what I want to give back to the Daisy community. This is like the gift. This website is going to be it. When I mean, at the moment, people might look at the website and be like, eh, it's okay. But in the future, this website is going to absolutely rock the boat. People that are new to the game will be recommending it. They'll be going to it. People that are old to the game will be going to it as well. And I want to create an environment where people can learn all about the game in a reliable way because at the moment well since i started youtube on daisy a lot of people share a lot of false information they make assumptions based on what they've seen and other people have seen different things and they they believe a certain thing and they share it around and then enough people say the same thing to it for it to be the truth and people within the whole community believe it and then i come along with a video saying no that's not the case this is actually the case and people are like, whoa, he's done it, he's here, whoa. And then people followed me because of that. And oh, I'm overwhelmed with um, the amount of passion that I have for this. I am. Um, and my gift back to the Daisy community is going to be this website. I hope to completely remove all monetization. At the moment, I do have adverts on there. Um, patrons do get it early, but I'm hoping that in like a year or two, We'll be at a point where the website is just so helpful to players, old and new alike, that they'll be able to just go onto Patreon and be like, yeah, I'm going to give a dollar a month because this website, it deserves to be on online. And I don't have to monetize it. And it's just something for the um, the Daisy community, you know? Now, it's my gift, <clears throat> I think, yeah. You, you talked about... Um... <clears throat> uh, that you, play, you have played other games and that. Now... Mm -hmm. I remember that um, for a while there, you um, were doing videos on The Division. Oh, yeah. And they were massively popular for you, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have any plans yeah, to cool. expand into other games? The reason I expanded into Division at that time is because Daisy updates back then were just so slow. Yeah. Like, seriously slow. Oh, yeah. Like, you'd have to, it would be like four to six months to see an update, and the update wasn't that great. Because I think at that time they were fleshing out the Infusion engine. They were basically focusing on that, getting the Infusion engine into Daisy, and it took them a couple of years to do that. I think it was. Um, so there weren't many updates, and I didn't really have much content to cover. I wasn't as in depth as I am now. Back then, if I did the same thing that I was I'm doing now, I would, you know, probably still have tons of content to do back then. But I saw the division. Everybody was playing the division at the time. Um, I enjoyed it, and I was. It was like a game that gripped me. And I, I'm not going to make videos for a game that I don't like. Um, I think it's very important that you're passionate about the the content that you create. Yep. Because otherwise, it comes across as you know quite Yellow. flat. Mm. So I liked the division, and I just wanted to create videos for it, and I did, and they were popular, and I was very thankful for that. But then the division died, like a lot of games do. They come in and they just disappear. Um, but yeah, I, I probably will go on to other games if Daisy content dries up for me. And by that, I mean I've covered pretty much everything, and all all answer, all questions are pretty much answered, and I've done my job, and the website is fleshed out, and you know, I feel when I feel like I've done my job, then I'll start covering other games. But I will definitely not neglect Daisy. The website will be kept up to date, and I'll update everybody when a new patch comes out. That's my goal. I don't know if I'll be able to do this forever, and if I can't, then I'll do it in my in my spare time. But the Daisy community has given me so much that I just cannot repay them. I don't think it's possible. Can you repay don't, someone? Don't 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 think. Like I said before, mate. Don't think you have to. Um, <clears throat> I think yeah. I have to. Yeah, and that that, that says a lot about um, the sort of person you are, mate. And it's one of the reasons I like you so much is you're a very humble person. Um, and, yeah, that's, yeah, you, you don't owe us anything, mate. Um, we're just happy to have you back and happy that you're happy is probably the uh, the, be, the, be, the best part, mate. 
you know, from, ha yeah, hashtag Wobo, we love you. In Wobo, <laughs> in Wobo, we trust is something I like to type every now and then. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. Um, now, I, I do something with most of my guests, um, and it would be um, rude of me not to do it with you as well, mate. The rapid fire okay. questions. So just say uh, the first thing that pops into your mind. Okay, I try not to get in trouble with this one. Because <laughs> I can be a bit edgy sometimes. I, I can. My humour, as you, if you've watched my videos, I can be a bit edgy. I, I, I am hoping. I am hoping for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, favourite long range weapon. Mosin. Least favourite long range weapon. Uh, Longhorn. Um, favourite automatic weapon. M4. Least favourite automatic weapon. UMP. KOS. KOS. Kill on sight. Kill on sight, yeah. Do I kill on sight? What 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 does KOS make you think? Kill on sight. Yeah, but um okay, we we're gonna need to expand on this one. Um uh, when you think of kill on sight, what does it make you think? Bandit. First person or third person? First person. Favourite server? Vanilla. Official. Favourite place on the map? Can be Wobo, can be Shobo. <laughs> Public or private service? Public. You're one of the few who says that public um, being the favourite, but well, why is that for you? What what makes um, po um, uh, the official servers so much better? I want to play the DayZ that developers intend me to play. Yep. So whatever the developers shovel out is what I want to experience. And I think that's what a lot of people experience as well with console and PS4. Um, I know it's unusual to be like that, but um, I want to play the game that the developers envision. I don't want to have a modded server because I don't know exactly what these people have done on the modded server. And I prefer just to play what the developers intended. I trust the Daisy developers. I think they're fantastic developers, and I believe in their vision for the game, and I trust whatever they put in the game. I I like community servers, but I prefer um, official public. I know that there are hacker issues. Yep. But yeah, <clears throat> I just <laughs> I just like their vision of the game. I think they're incredibly creative and skilled, and there are a lot of problems with Daisy, but I think that's something that I enjoy the most um look I, 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 I always say mate the day that there isn't any bugs or problems with day z we're not going to know what to do with ourselves i think that's right yeah it adds it adds to the charm as well yes. and every, yes, it does. every game has bugs and yep you know it, it does um i think the type of people that don't really care about the bugs and they care more about the actual gameplay that's that's what we should be looking at. What's the problem with the gameplay? Not what the bugs are. The bugs can cause problems with the gameplay, but most of the time the bugs are just superficial. You know, the jankiness of vehicles, for example, if they kill you, yeah, that's that's a big gameplay issue, and that's something they're trying to fix because we're aware of that. Um, but if there's a bug with, like, you reloading upside down yeah, during an animation or something like that, just a bug then I think that's that adds to the quirkiness and the uniqueness of the game. I loved it back w back when developers used to add like quirky little things into the game, just yes. accidentally or they left a bug inside <clears> there <throat> because it wasn't important. The gameplay is what's important, not the polish. Yep. It's the gameplay, how you feel playing that game, how in-depth it is. <clears> that's why I love DayZ, because of how incredibly in-depth it is. You can tell that, well, I would say that all of the developers on the DayZ dev team are very very passionate about the game very passionate they love daisy they love the daisy community they wouldn't know what to do without it and i'm sure there are people that work there that you know are only interested in the money side of things or you know this is just a step towards what they want um but i think that the daisy developers are very passionate about the game and i think that's been very very evident recently yeah how they've been punching out such amazing content <coughs> the, uh, the it's... gas the dynamic gas and and uh, this the is not changes. shitting on any of the people before, uh, but mm. my fucking God, the I dev team at the moment are just <laughs> fucking know. insane, aren't they? I agree. Yeah. Look, and, you know, I'll, 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 I knew what you were going to say before you said it. 
they're, 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 they're obviously getting agree. to work with you know the the, the the teams in the past were doing a mm -hmm. lot of very in-depth behind the scenes stuff you know you talk about infusion mm -hmm. um and just getting the engine to a point where it <clears throat> could be what it is now but my god and i i have to say this they could not have picked a better person um, you know, obviously, if Dean Hall was still there, it would be great. Um, mm -hmm. Brian Hicks, um, Eugene, um, any of those would be great. But, you know, they all moved on. And I can't think of a better person to be in charge than Sumrak. Um, he's I a man who agree, lives yeah. and breathes and bleeds DayZ. It <laughs> frustrates me when you see people in comments say, you know, say, do the devs even play this game? Do you fucking know mm. who Sumrak is? <laughs> Get out of here with that shit, you fucking idiot. <laughs> I completely agree. I think that's the reason Sumrak doesn't really didn't have a good PC because he's very much a person that's driven by passion. And I don't think he would be a Daisy developer or the lead um, if he wasn't passionate about Daisy. He obviously yeah. is incredibly passionate. I mean, the mouse, that's just evidence that he's incredibly passionate. That's the best map for Daisy. I think a lot of people would agree with me for that. If you were neglecting the, uh, I forgot what the word is now, but the nostalgic effect yep. of Channel, yeah, I think the mouse would probably be the best map, without a doubt. Yeah. Why is, what's your theory on why everyone always ends up going back to Chernerus? I think it's because it's familiar. They know it. Um, and also it gives you that feeling of, loneliness in an apoc apocalyptic world yeah the mouse is very action like you can get straight into the action on the mouse you start to freeze you know you need to rush around and get food you need to get clothing you need to you know melt the beams then um, you end up in vorkuta and there's every fucking man and his dog yes exactly and then you've got a, a lot of people spawning in the similar locations um Whereas Turneris is a lot more laid back, relaxed experience. You spawn on the coast, there's probably not anybody around. You have to deal with infected. You have to deal with tasks slowly, bit by bit. And I think that is what I enjoy most when I'm playing Daisy. Um, just that slow, progressive experience of gathering food and getting clothes and moving yourself west across the map and all of the journey along the way. It's like you can have a million different adventures on. Um, on the, all of the different maps in DayZ. But I think Chernerus allows it allows us to have the more fulfilling adventure um, compared to Namask. What do you Namask think of... Is, Sorry? Yeah, Namask is very fun, but I think Chernerus um, is a more comfortable map for most people, yeah. And what do you think of the ugly stepchild, Livonia? I like how green it is. But I feel like they don't really need a map. I feel like a little bit, that was a bit of a cash grab. Just a tiny bit to try and get some extra funds, a DLC. Um, so I'm not a fan of Livonia. Uh, depending on what's going to happen in Secrets of Livonia, whether that's 1.19, I'm not sure. I think it is. Um, it, it could bring that map back to life, but I, I believe that a lot of people are not great fans of Livonia. Um, Chernerus is, you know, ten times better. Yeah. Ten times better. <laughs> Maybe even more. I don't know. If it was a lot better than Chernerus, then I would like it, but I don't know. I just don't like Livonia, to be honest. I just don't like it. I love it. I can play but it. I, I, but I, I love just wandering and being lost and um, then when someone takes a shot at me or I see someone that scares the living bejesus out of me, but I just love that being able to get lost in the forests and the mm -hmm. bears and yeah, I know there's bears and Cherneris now, but it's just Livonia is always going to have a special spot for me, but I agree with you. Um, I didn't like the price tag of it. Um, <clears throat> I honestly think that they should have released it as a, um, a free, um, D a free DLC and just said, you know, yeah. this is our gift to you. Um, for staying loyal to the game. Uh, but mm -hmm. I understand they're a business. They're not a, a charity. They need to make money. They've got yeah, bills yeah, to yeah. pay. Um, yeah. You know, for those who don't know, the story is that, you know, they almost went bust um, when Armour 2 didn't really take off. Um, and then this 
crazy Kiwi bloody uh, ex-soldier um, releases a mod and it just re-injected um, money into the company and interest in armor and Operation Arrowhead and um, they made an absolute fucking shit ton from DayZ. They did. I don't know why they're not 100% focusing, not 100%, but like 80% focusing on DayZ. I don't think whoever's running the company, they don't. They might not like the fact that you their think game the same as me is successful because of a mod. You the think company is successful because of that. You're, you're wearing the same tinfoil hat as me right now, brother. Um, yeah. That's that's my theory as well. Was, Armor Free was fantastic, and the the mods that were available as a result of that, and I think now they're realizing with Reforger that modding is very much a strong part of their their business, and they're starting to appreciate the fact that player created content is you know, basically what made them, I would say. But it's one of my favorite companies at the moment uh, when it comes to developers because all the rest of them are just completely falling to pieces. Like, I don't know any game company that I like at the moment, really. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you, you got me thinking now as well. It's like, shit, is there <laughs> any? I watch a lot Maybe of videos perfect, on that. But, <laughs> but, but they're not perfect, but they don't have DLCs. And, I mean, they don't have, um, you know, like cash shops or anything like that. Yeah. They haven't injected... That sort of stuff. Loot, loot boxes that, and right? stuff like that. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, yeah. pay to win. Boxes and <laughs> pay to win is just the uh, province of the servers, the community servers yeah, now. Yeah. So um, I, I just had a thought as well. Um, I'm wondering if there's some sort of um, scope for you to do um, a couple of videos around Livonia um, investigating it because, you know, like a couple of people are saying in chat, um, for console, that's the only other... Um, legitimate option. I know they've got Zagoria, which the team talked about on the weekend and that, that Project Lemons has been working on. Uh, but essentially, it's still Chernerous at its core. Uh, but they, they, that might be something for, you know, to increase um, you know, your spread a bit um, to do something about Livonia so that people can, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, there, um, might, there, there might be some science um, that's um, particular to it. Um, yeah, maybe a, maybe maybe a tips video for Livonia. Uh, bonus oh, that's tip. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not. I it's my least favorite map out of the three that I've played. Um, I will be playing it more because since I've returned, I haven't really had the opportunity to stream as much. So I will certainly be trying to play the game. Mm -hmm. Um, and Livonia, I've I know how Livonia looks and I know where stuff is. Um, on the Livonia map, but I don't know. A lot of information other than that. Oh, um, I have to go. <laughs> I don't know when the interview ends, but yeah, I've got to go to a meeting in half an hour and I've got to drive there. So No worries, mate. Uh, look, we'll, we'll start to wrap it up then. Uh, I'll throw it out uh, just quickly. Does anyone mm -hmm. in um, um, chat have a question for Wobo um, while that pops in? Uh, what advice would you give to people thinking about buying DayZ? <clears throat> You're asking people in the chat or me? No, you. Well, um, <laughs> people uh, come up with any questions they want to ask you. Uh, about buying DayZ? Yeah. What advice would you give to people thinking about buying DayZ? To buy it. Yeah, for sure. Without a doubt. Not just because I'm a content creator and it gives me extra views or whatever. <laughs> oh, dear. You capitalist whore, you. <laughs> but because um, it's... It's a great game, and I think the developers really, really enjoy uh, creating content for the game. I'm sorry, I have to go in a minute. Okay. Like, yeah, uh, two two questions, then. We've got two questions. One, okay. how big are your feet? How big are my feet? Yes. Oh, uh, I'm size 11, UK, which I think is the same in EU. Yep. Size 10 or 11, I'm not sure. Um, and what do you think about console, Daisy? I think console Daisy is the preferred way to play it for me. I love mods, and mods help move my videos a lot. But if I was going to play the game in any certain way, it would be the way that developers intend it. Um, I love mods. Don't get me wrong here, and I love playing with mods. But I just I like the vanilla version. I like it as it yep. is standard. You know. <laughs> yeah. Wobo, on behalf of everyone, once again, mate. Thank you for all you do for us. 
Um, there's no one who comes even close to um, the level of detail that you give us um, on this game. And when the game is such an unforgiving game that doesn't give you a, a tutorial mode or anything like that, um, for those who can stick past the dying and not knowing how to open a can of fucking food and being frustrated that you can't just smash it open on the ground, when they do start going looking, um, or they are someone, um, the first place you should all be recommending to them is Wobo's website, folks. Um, I've got the links here um, in chat. Um, now, um, please, if you can, consider going and signing up to Wobo's Patreon. Um, I've been a member of it. I love being a member of it. Um, and by proxy, anyone who supports the podcast is also a member because it comes out of the podcast, a um, uh, little bit of money that we make. Um, we try to give back as much to the community as possible. Um, and also spread the word about his website, folks. Um, you know, probably one of the greatest uh, collabs in Daisy history. Uh, isn't Mr. Moon and Chow? Isn't Mr. Blackout and uh, Jam Jar? It's Wobo and Asmondian, and they're both on the same website now, folks. <laughs> Thank you very much for the kind words, Boydie. I really have to get going. Yes. Uh, my fiance is waiting outside, so no worries, I'm mate. Right now. Thank you yeah. so so much for this, and all the best with the future, my man. Thank you very much for inter interviewing me. Thank you, Thank you for agreeing. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.